I found out about their affair and got even. Now they need me desperately. It was a warm summer evening when I stumbled upon the secret that would shatter my world. The sun was setting, casting a golden glow over our suburban neighborhood. From the outside, my life seemed perfect. I was happily married to Oswald, my high school sweetheart, and we had a beautiful daughter, Lily. We lived in a charming house with a white picket fence, the picture of the American dream. But beneath the surface, something was amiss. Oswald had been acting strange for weeks, coming home late from work, distracted and distant. Lily, once my confidant and friend, seemed to be hiding something as well. I chalked it up to stress and teenage angst, refusing to believe that anything could be seriously wrong. After all, our life was perfect, wasn't it? One evening, as I was tidying up the living room, I noticed Oswald's phone buzzing on the coffee table. He was in the shower and curiosity got the better of me. I picked up the phone and saw a message from an unknown number. It read, Can't wait to see you tonight. Missing you already. S. My heart sank. I knew I shouldn't invade his privacy, but I couldn't resist. I unlocked the phone and scrolled through the messages. What I found confirmed my worst fears. Oswald was having an affair. There were dozens of messages, photos, and even videos exchanged between him and a woman named Sarah. But what shocked me even more was seeing messages from Lily, my own daughter, coordinating secret meetups and covering for her father. That night, I confronted Oswald. He came out of the shower, towel wrapped around his waist, to find me sitting on the bed with his phone in hand. His face turned pale when he saw the expression on my face. I handed him the phone, showing him the messages. Explain this, I demanded my voice shaking with anger and betrayal. Oswald tried to deny it at first, but the evidence was overwhelming. He broke down, admitting to the affair and pleading for forgiveness. But the damage was done, my world had come crashing down, and I didn't know how to pick up the pieces. Lily was next. I waited until the next day, my anger simmering under the surface. When she came home from school, I showed her the messages, she burst into tears, apologizing and saying she was only trying to help her father because she thought he was unhappy. But her betrayal cut just as deep. How could my own daughter lie to me? In the weeks that followed, I was consumed by anger and hurt. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. My mind was filled with thoughts of revenge. They had destroyed our family, and I needed to make them pay. But I knew I had to be smart about it. I needed a plan that would make them understand the depth of their betrayal. I started by gathering evidence. I copied all the messages, photos, and videos from Oswald's phone onto a USB drive. I had a private investigator to follow Oswald and Sarah, documenting their every move. The investigator was thorough, providing me with a detailed report and even more incriminating evidence. My plan was simple but devastating. I compiled all the evidence into a dossier and sent it to Oswald's boss and colleagues at his law firm. Oswald was a respected attorney, and the affair was a scandal that rocked his professional world. He was suspended pending an investigation, and his reputation was in tatters. But I didn't stop there. I anonymously sent the dossier to Sarah's husband. The fallout was immediate. Their marriage crumbled and Sarah's life was turned upside down. She lost her job, her home, and her social standing. It was a ruthless and calculated act of vengeance, but I felt a grim satisfaction watching them suffer. With Oswald and Sarah's lives in ruins, I turned my attention to Lily. I knew she was young and had been manipulated by her father, but her betrayal still stung. I decided to give her a second chance, but on my terms, she would have to earn my trust back. I insisted that we go to therapy together. Lily resisted at first, but eventually, she agreed. The sessions were painful and emotional, but they helped us start to heal. I also enrolled her in a different school, hoping a fresh start would help her move on from the scandal and rebuild her life. As I focused on rebuilding my life and healing my relationship with Lily, I discovered something unexpected. While sorting through the evidence, I found a series of encrypted messages on Oswald's phone. They were different from the others, filled with cryptic references and coded language. My curiosity was piqued. What could these messages mean? I decided to investigate further. I hired a tech expert to decrypt the messages, and what he found shocked me to my core. Oswald and Munro were involved in something far more sinister than an affair. They were embezzling money from Oswald's law firm, funneling it through offshore accounts. The affair had been a cover for their illegal activities. 
Armed with this new information, I went to the authorities. I provided them with the decrypted messages and the evidence of embezzlement. The investigation that followed was swift and thorough. Oswald and Munro were arrested, facing charges of fraud, embezzlement, and conspiracy. The media frenzy that ensued was overwhelming. Our once perfect family was now the center of a public scandal. Oswald's trial was highly publicized, and the evidence against him was damning. He was found guilty and sentenced to prison, his life in ruins. With Oswald and Munro behind bars, I thought the nightmare was finally over. But the reality was far from it. Oswald's law firm sued him for damages, and we were left with crippling legal fees and debts. Lily and I struggled to make ends meet, our once comfortable life now at distant memory. One day, I received a letter from Oswald. It was a heartfelt apology, filled with remorse and regret. He begged for my forgiveness and asked for my help. He had been diagnosed with a serious illness and needed support. Despite everything, he was still Lily's father, and a part of me couldn't ignore his plea. I was torn. Part of me wanted to turn my back on him, to let him suffer the consequences of his actions. But another part of me, the part that remembered the good times and the love we once shared, felt a pang of sympathy. Could I really continue to hold on to my anger, knowing the pain it was causing Lily and me? I sought advice from friends and family, but ultimately, the decision was mine. I took time to reflect, to heal from the wounds of betrayal, and in the quiet moments, I realized that holding on to anger would only continue to hurt us. Forgiving Oswald wouldn't erase the past, but it could pave the way for healing and closure. With a heavy heart, I decided to extend an olive branch. I agreed to visit Oswald in prison, to hear him out and see if he was truly remorseful. The meeting was emotional, filled with tears and apologies. Oswald admitted his mistakes, acknowledging the pain he had caused. I listened to my heart itching with the memories of our past, but I also saw the sincerity in his eyes, the genuine regret and desire to make things right. I knew that forgiving him wouldn't be easy, but it was a step towards healing. Forgiving Oswald was not a simple process. It took time, patience and effort from all sides. I made it clear that things could never go back to the way they were. The trust had been shattered and it would take time to rebuild. But I was willing to give him a chance to prove himself. Oswald worked tirelessly to regain our trust. He attended therapy, made amends, and showed his commitment to change. It was a long and difficult journey, but slowly the wounds began to heal. I too focused on my own healing. I pursued new hobbies, reconnected with old friends, and rediscovered my passions. I realized that my worth was not defined by the betrayal I had experienced but by the strength I had found within myself. Years passed, and the pain of the past began to fade. Oswald, Lily, and I found a new normal, one built on honesty and mutual respect. We would never be the same as we once were, but we had learned from our mistakes and grown as individuals. My story became an inspiration to others who had faced betrayal. I spoke openly about my journey, the pain, the revenge, and ultimately, the forgiveness. I showed that even in the darkest moments, there is a path to healing and redemption. As I reflected on my journey, I realized there was one aspect that had always puzzled me. How had I managed to discover the affair at the exact moment I did? It seemed almost too coincidental. I decided to delve deeper, to uncover the mystery behind that fateful discovery. Through my investigation, I learned that it wasn't just chance that had led me to Oswald's phone that evening. An anonymous tip had been sent to my email, alerting me to the affair. The sender's identity was a mystery, but their actions had set in motion the events that had changed my life forever. Determined to uncover the truth, I hired a private investigator. After months of searching, we discovered that the tip had come from someone unexpected, Sarah's estranged husband, Paul. He had discovered the affair and, in a moment of anger and betrayal, decided to expose them. I reached out to Paul, curious about his motives and how he had known about the affair. Paul explained that he had suspected something was amiss for months and had finally found the evidence he needed. When he saw how deeply I was being hurt, he decided to take action. Paul's confession brought a sense of closure to me. I realized that even in the midst of betrayal, there were people who cared about my well-being. He and I developed an unexpected friendship, bonded by our shared experiences of betrayal and healing. My journey had come full circle. I had discovered the truth, sought revenge, 
and found forgiveness. But more importantly, I had learned the power of resilience and the importance of self-worth. I no longer define myself by the actions of others but by my own strength and courage. In the end, my story was not just about betrayal and revenge, but about the transformative power of forgiveness and the human capacity for growth. It was a story of pain, healing, and ultimately, redemption. With the past behind us, Oswald, Lily, and I began to move forward. We continued to attend therapy, working through our issues and rebuilding our relationships. It wasn't easy, and there were many setbacks along the way, but we were committed to making it work. Lily decided to take a gap year before starting college. She wanted to take the time to find herself and figure out what she truly wanted in life. Oswald, who made significant changes. He used his time in prison to reflect on his actions and make amends. Upon his release, he dedicated himself to community service, helping others and finding a sense of purpose. As for me, I found solace in writing. I started a blog, sharing my story and connecting with others who had experienced similar betrayals. It was cathartic, helping me to process my emotions and find a sense of peace. Over time, we found a new normal. Our family wasn't perfect, but we were stronger and more united than ever before. We had faced our demons and come out the other side, scared but resilient. Our journey had taught us the importance of honesty, communication, and forgiveness. As I stood on the stage, sharing my story with an audience of thousands, I felt a sense of peace. I had faced the darkest moments of my life and emerged stronger. And in doing so, I had become a beacon of hope for others who had faced similar betrayals. The applause was thunderous, but my heart was calm. I had found my closure, and now I could finally move forward, leaving the past behind and embracing the future with open arms. In the end, our story wasn't just about betrayal and revenge. It was about the power of forgiveness and the strength of the human spirit. We had faced unimaginable pain, but had come out stronger, more united, and more resilient. And that, I realized, was the greatest revenge of all.